Good Sunday morning. We're glad you're here today. This day is a double great day. Well, I guess we could say triple because it's Sunday. We get to be here at church together. But then it's also our friend day in high attendance for our Sunday school class. So if you're a visitor here this morning and you're someone's friend that is, you've been invited to be here, we are thankful that you have come today and we pray that you have a blessed time together. But then it's also Pastor's Appreciation Day and we are celebrating our pastor, Brother Kevin, this morning. And uh, we'll, we'll let you give him a round of applause when he comes up to preach here in just a little while. But let's start out our service with the choir singing, Holy, Holy, Holy. So choir, if you'd stand. And congregation, you're welcome to sing with us. And you're allowed to keep your seat for right now as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. worship the Lord and Savior, and we think of who he is and what he's done as we worship him this morning. Our scripture reading for this month is Psalm 67, and we'll begin reading with verse 1. It says, May God be gracious to us, and bless us, and make his face shine on us, so that your ways may be known on the earth, and your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. And this is God's word for us this morning. May he bless the reading of his word. Pray for the choir as they sing, his grace is sufficient for me.
And isn't that what we need today to know that his grace is sufficient for each and every one of our needs. Whatever the day may bring, he will give us the grace that we need. Amen. We're going to get around and shake hands and fellowship this morning, and then we'll come back together and sing a few congregational songs. So shake hands and fellowship today. This morning, if you'll, if you're able, please keep standing with us as we sing. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory, oh glorious victory that overcomes the world. To him who overcomes the foe, white raiment shall be given. Before the angels he shall know his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light, our hearts will love a flame, will vanquish all the hosts of night in Jesus' conquering name. The victory, faith is the victory. Oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Amen. Now, how many of you know this next song? A mighty fortress is our God. Uh, one of my favorite old, old time. I think this was written in the 1400s, I believe. Somewhere around there, a long time ago, long before y'all were born anyway. So let's sing this, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. We need to hear these songs in a day where there's a lot of confusion, a lot of terrible things going on around in the world. We need to know that God is powerful. God is still strong. He has not weakened. His arm has not lessened in strength. He is still in control. So let's sing this wonderful song together, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to us woe, his craft and 
confide our striving would be losing we're not the right man on our side the man of god's own choosing dost ask who that may be christ jesus it is he lord That's a little bit hard of a song to sing, but uh, what great truth is the, in that song. And there's also 12 verses, so we decided not to preach a sermon before the sermon gets preached this morning, but what a wonderful song. Then let's sing this last song together. Uh, Jesus, what a friend for sinners. He is truly our friend, and we are thankful for him. Let's sing this as our last congregational this morning. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends may fail me, foes assail me. He, my Savior, makes me together. Father, we do thank you for this day. Lord, I'm thankful for these songs that we've sung this morning. And Lord, you know my heart and you know the concerns of it. 
Lord, there's so much uncertainty in this world today, and we are thankful that as we sing these songs, your Holy Spirit encourages us and helps us to understand the truths that we've already been taught, that you are in control, that you are good, that you give us grace that we need, Father, and that you are our friend. Lord, I'm thankful that the worst name that they could come up with for your son was that he was a friend for sinners. Father, I'm thankful for that today, and I'm thankful for the encouragement that these songs give to my heart. Lord, I pray that you'd be with Brother Kevin as he comes and brings the message here in just a moment. We ask that you'd give him strength and give us the ability to listen and hear what your word has for us today. Father, we'll thank you and praise you for it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. And uh, we want to just say today is Pastor's Appreciation Day. And uh, we love our pastor, Brother Kevin, and we want to show... Yes, please give him a hand. Amen. And... Uh, we as a church are going to have breakfast together. And so if you would, after the sermon, as long as he doesn't preach too long this morning, uh, we'll, no, we'll still have breakfast no matter how long he preaches. But there'll also be a table if you have a gift or a card you'd like to give to Pastor. And uh, just show, his appreciate, show your appreciation for him. And you know what? He wouldn't be able to do what he does if it weren't for Miss Terry. So make sure you show some appreciation to her today as well. And um, we love them, and we're thankful for their love to us this morning. Amen. Well, thank you. If anybody is indebted this morning, it is me. Thank you so much for your kindness over the years and the love you have shown and the patience you have extended to me. Uh, long, long, long patience. You have been very great. Thank you so much for all that you do. I want to say welcome to all of you that are visiting with us this morning. I know many of you are here because a friend has invited you to come and be here on Friend Day, and we are so thankful that you have joined us today. Today I want to talk to you about a woman that had a chance encounter with the Lord Jesus. She was actually caught off guard by the opportunity that was given to her. Not only was she caught off guard, but the disciples couldn't believe what they saw as Jesus interacted with this woman. And not only were they caught off guard, but there is a village not far from where this experience took place. The woman went back into town and told everybody about her chance encounter with the Lord Jesus, and it just turned the whole town upside down. Matter of fact, it was the townspeople who actually said what you see on the screen there, that he really is the Savior of the whole world. You may be here this morning, and my prayer for you, is that you'll have one of those chance encounters with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that your heart will be open this morning as God speaks to us from his word. Now, while this was a chance encounter for the woman and the disciples were actually caught off guard by what they saw, and the whole town really was uh, somewhat caught off guard by what they heard from this woman, it was not a chance encounter for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's as though he knew before it even started what was about to take place. In John chapter 4, verse number 4, the Bible says, Now he had to go through Samaria. John wants us to know this is not just an accidental trip Jesus is taking. John wants us to know he had to go through Samaria. It's as though he knew something wonderful was about to unfold, not only before the woman, before the disciples and before the town people, but even before us as we gather here this morning to look at this experience in the life of this woman. And I hope today maybe you will have an experience similar to what she experienced with Jesus. Verse number four, now he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. In other words, it was about noon. It was about noontime. What an unusual time to go to the well. Jesus, of course, we understand his being there. He's traveling through. 
And the Bible says he was weary from the journey, and so he sat down. But all of a sudden, there is a woman there. Now, if the sixth hour means anything, it means really nobody should be at the well. And so Jesus is there, and then here comes this woman. Verse number 7, when a Samaritan woman uh, came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? Now, the Bible wants us to know all the little details about what's taking place in this passage. Look at verse number 8. Nobody was there because the disciples had gone to town to buy food. Now, it's a weird experience. Jesus sitting alone <coughs> at the well. It's noontime. It's not the time of the day that people go to the well. Of course, we understand why Jesus is there. He's taking a journey. And so he stopped to rest. He was weary. And so he sat by the well. And then suddenly the Samaritan woman came along. Verse number 9, the Samaritan woman said to him, You're a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? Here again, another one of those little details. John points this out to us, and then he tells us, Now, it's very unusual for Jews to associate with a Samaritan. John would actually tell us that really the Jews never did associate with the Samaritan. And so this woman is caught off guard by this experience. And really what she's saying is, you're a man, I'm a woman, and yet you're asking me for a drink. And really she kind of emphasizes, you're a Jewish man, I'm a Samaritan woman. How is it you would ask me for a drink? It's as though she is caught off guard by the whole experience. Notice, if you would, verse number 10. Jesus said, if you only knew, <laughs> if you only knew the gift that God wants to offer to you and who it is at this particular time that is asking you for a drink, you would ask him and he would give you living water. Now, Jesus is tired. You understand when you're tired from a journey, a drink of water is just the best thing on the planet. The water from this well would be very cool, and it would be so refreshing. And this woman, she's caught off guard by the question that a man would be asking a woman, much less a Jewish man, asking a Samaritan woman. And so Jesus sort of opens the door and says, look, this experience is a whole lot better than just a man asking a woman for a drink or a Jewish man asking a Samaritan woman for a drink. If you really knew what God wants to do in your life, you would ask me, give me a drink, and I would give you living water. Now, this woman has no clue what's about to take place. Look at verse number 11. Jesus has just asked her for a drink. And she said, and Jesus is offering her living water. And she says, now, mister, that doesn't make any sense. You ain't got no bucket. How in the world are you going to give me a drink? Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it herself, uh, himself, and as did also his sons, his flocks, and his herds? Now, there's a lot of rich history in what that woman has just said. Jacob and his sons had actually found this well, had actually dug it out and made the water where they could drink it. And then sometime later it got covered up, and so they had to open it back up and do it again. There's a lot of rich history that is taking place in this one exchange. And this woman seems to know a lot about this well. It's been around for thousands of years. And she wants to know, are you greater then Jacob, the one who gave us this well, look at verse number 13. Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. 
Not only will this water change her life, but we're going to see before the story ends that she goes to tell everybody she knows. And you know all about this, don't you? You find a good sale somewhere, what do you do? Keep it to yourself so you can get all the goodies when, as the time goes along? No, man, you start calling people. Do you know what they're doing down at such and such? Or, <laughs> this is the one that everybody seems to be crazy about these days, you find that magic something that can cause you to lose a few pounds. And suddenly, you start telling everybody about what's going on. And we get all excited about good news in our life. This woman has gotten very excited about the water that she's going to get to drink from this well. And it really is going to well up in her the gift of eternal life. And she just can't help it. She has to go spread this news everywhere that she knows. The woman said to the man, or said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and I won't have to keep coming here to draw water. Now, this, wa this well was not only a place of magnificent uh, significance in her life, had historical significance, had significance for her as she came out and get this refreshing water every single day. But it was also <coughs> a place of pain. She's there at the noon hour because most people had already been there and gone. And she never went out to the well with them, not because they wouldn't talk to her, but it was because mostly they talked about her. The kind of life that she lived had not made her a very popular person. She, we're going to read here in just a moment where she had had a lot of experiences with a lot of different men. And you can imagine the kind of reputation that she must have had uh, in the town where she lived. Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty, first of all, but also give me this water so that I don't have to keep coming out to this well every single day verse 16 jesus said will you go call your husband and come back and then she looked at jesus and she said well i don't have a husband and jesus said well you're right you don't as a matter of fact you have had five husbands and the man you have now is not your husband what you have said is just, uh, what you have just said is quite true. Suddenly this woman realizes there's more to this man that, that stands before her than just a man who's looking for a drink of water. And so she says, sir, I can see that you're a prophet. Our fathers worshiped on this mountain, but the Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. And Jesus responded by saying, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in, the, nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming. Matter of fact, it's already here. The time is, has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshiper the Father seeks. Now you came this morning to worship God. And I hope you enjoyed singing our songs together. Hope you enjoyed the time of prayer when we prayed together. I hope you've enjoyed everything about this worship experience. I even have enough arrogance in me to hope you're enjoying this message this morning. I hope you enjoy every aspect of this worship. But let me tell you something. You didn't come this morning seeking God. Before you ever got to this place this morning, God was seeking you. God is seeking people who will worship him with spirit and in truth. If you're a visitor with us this morning and you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, I want you to know God is seeking you right now. God loves you so much that he sent his son into the world to die for your sins. And then he raised him to life after the third day so that he could give you new life in him. 
If you're here today and you've never put your trust in Christ, I hope today you'll let him forgive you of your sin. You'll open your heart and receive him as your Savior and Lord. The living water he wants to give to this woman is living water that he wants to give to you. I don't know what you came searching for this morning, but I want you to know that Jesus wants to meet needs in your life that will take care of so many things in your life. It will begin answering questions of things that you've been searching for much of your life if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior and Lord. I pray that today you'll open your heart and receive him. Uh, this woman says, uh, I can tell that you're a prophet. So she asked for this water. And uh, then Jesus said, Jesus is, God is looking for true worshipers, those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Look, if you would, verse 24. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. This woman lets him know that she has heard much of what he's saying. The woman said, I know that Messiah, who is called the Christ, is coming. And when he comes, he's going to explain everything to her. And Jesus sort of pulls back the layers that are covering her eyes. Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. I'm the one you've been waiting for. I'm the one you've been looking for. And I would tell you, I don't know what you're looking for in life. But I know that Jesus will solve all of those issues for you. Well, verse number 27 says that the disciples returned from getting the food, and they were surprised. Here he is talking with a woman. But no one asked him, what do you want, or why are you talking with this woman? Then leaving the, uh, the jar behind, the woman went back to town and she said to the people, oh, you got to meet this man. You got to see this man. He has told me everything. Uh, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Christ? And they came out of town and they made their way toward him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, you need to eat something. <laughs> and so he begins to tell them. Oh, there's more going on here than you can imagine. Listen, the food that I have to eat, uh, you don't know anything about. The disciples said to anybody, uh, each other, can anyone, has anyone brought him food? Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish the work. Don't say to each other, four months more and then have, we have harvest. I tell you, Open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe with harvest. Now, I tend to wonder in the passage if Jesus was just pointing toward the hillside because this woman had already gone back into town and started telling everything, everybody she could find, all about this man called Jesus. And I wonder, had they already started making their way out to see Jesus? Because Jesus is pointing and saying, look, the harvest is already ready. It's ready even now. Verse number 36. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now the harvest crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you did not work for. Others have done the hard work and you reap the benefits of their labor. Many of the Samaritans in that town went out to see him, and they believed him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed with them for two days. Now, can you imagine having Jesus sit down with you for two long days. Uh, I remember all my life I have people say, you know, when I get to heaven, one of the things I'm going to ask, and then they've got some question they want to ask when they get in front of Jesus. Uh, but here are people that have two days 
they get to sit down with Jesus and they get to talk to him about all the things that's been going on in their life. He sat down with them and he taught them for two long days. Look at verse 41. And because of his words, many more became believers. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man truly is the savior of the whole world. If you're here this morning, you've never opened your heart and received what Jesus Christ has done for you. I want to say that to you again. Jesus Christ really is the savior of the whole world. Now, my suspicion is that this is not the first time you've ever heard that. If you're here today and you're hearing that again, my question would, for you would be, what's keeping you from opening your heart and receiving Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life? Is it because of what others may think? Is it because of something you've heard about Christianity? <laughs> well, sadly enough, most of the bad things you hear about Christianity are probably true. But that does not reflect the Lord Jesus Christ. We are folks just like you are folk. And we still have our mistakes. We still are living in a broken world. And many of us still have cracks and broken spots in our life. But we know that Jesus really is the Savior of the whole world. And we're working on it. We really are trying to be a better people this week than we were last week. But God is still patient with us. God is still working with us. And God wants to work with you. If you've never opened your heart and received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, in just a few moments, we're going to give you an invitation, allow you to come. And if you have questions, I'd love to talk with you about them. But if you just want to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, let me just say to you, He truly is the Savior of the whole world. And he wants to be your Savior too. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this one wonderful story about this woman who had a chance opportunity to meet with Jesus. And we see that that change, that chance, not only changed her life, but it shocked even the disciples. And it turned the whole city upside down. And many people became followers simply because of this chance opportunity you gave to this woman to sit with Jesus. Father, I, there are those here this morning that have come to this place. Maybe they came here this morning simply because it's Sunday morning. They felt they needed to go to church. Or maybe they're here this morning because a friend took the time to invite them and encourage them to come be a part of this special day. Regardless of why they're here this morning, I pray that they will hear the truth of this passage and they'll open their heart and they'll confess with their mouth that Jesus truly is the Savior of the whole world. Father, there are many believers in this building this morning and we sort of watch this woman and we see the change that Jesus made in her life. And for many of us, it's a reminder that we need to leave this place going to tell everyone that we know about this wonderful man named Jesus who has changed our life. I pray that this morning that you'll work in our hearts, that you'll remind us of our need to spread the good news so that everyone can know that Jesus truly is the Savior of the whole world. But this morning, for those that are here that have never opened their heart and received Christ, I pray today will be their day of salvation. Would you move in their hearts, we pray. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Well, we're going to stand together and we're going to sing this morning. If you're here, you've never trusted Christ as your Savior and Lord, I pray today you'll open your heart and receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord. Let's stand together this morning. You need to trust Christ this morning. You come. I'll meet you right here at the front. sorrow and 
and night. Jesus, I come. Jesus, I come into thy freedom, gladness, and light. Jesus, I come to thee. Out of my sickness into your health, out of my want and into your wealth, out of my sin and into yourself. Jesus, I come to you. Out of my shameful failure and loss, Jesus, I come, Jesus, I come into the glorious gain of the cross. Jesus, I come to you. Out of earth's sorrows into your palm, out of life's storm and into your calm, out of distress to jubilant song. Jesus, I come to you. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. Logan's coming with the announcements this morning. Have your bulletins handy, ready to listen. Amen. If you haven't picked up a bulletin, please do so. As you head to Sunday school, don't forget before Sunday school, downstairs in the new fellowship hall, we are having um, breakfast um, with our pastor to celebrate pastor appreciation. So make your way downstairs right before Sunday school, um, and we will get, be together down there. Now, back to the bulletin. Don't forget about our community tailgate and cookout um, on October 28th from 12 to 4. Um, that will be, uh, there's, I think there's still a sign-up sheet in the back. Um, if you would like to bring something to that or like to donate something to that, if you have any questions, you can see Austin Holt or Philip Johnson um, for that. We also have a work day for Walt Through Bethlehem that morning. Um, that work day will only be a half day because of the cookouts. We will cut that off about 10, 30, 11 o'clock to where we can get ready um, for the community cookout that day. Um, also, the fall festival is that night. Um, so right after our community cookout from 4 to 6, um, we will be having our fall festival. Um, Ms. Megan Boatwright is heading that up, so if you have any questions, you can see her. I know she's needing some stuff um, to be brought for that, um, and some volunteers to set up for that as well. Um, we also still have our candy buckets right behind the, these uh, the set of doors on the right, so if you would like to bring some candy and donate that, um, we have one tote full, but uh, we would like to get at least two or three full to be able to hand out um, to the trick-or-treaters that night and to the kids that night as well. Um, there you have, we have a new book in our church library, God Never Gives Up On You, so you can check that out, and there's a um, synopsis of that in the bulletin. Um, also, the Merrymakers will be going out to lunch this Thursday, October the 19th. Please be at the church by 1030. Um, it does not say where you go, but I'm sure Miss Joanne, you can uh, ask Miss Joanne uh, where they're going for that. All right, let's see. Um, don't forget about our state convention, uh, November 14th and 15th. If you want to be a messenger of the DeKalb Association or a delegate from our church, you can see Mr. Paul uh, Tumlin. He will get you some more information on that. And then um, don't forget about our annual uh, DeKalb Baptist annual meeting on Sunday, October 22nd. Again, if you would like to be a delegate for that, you can see Mr. Paul Tumlin um, for that. Also, the Stella Patton Group will be meeting tomorrow, October 16th at 6 p.m. in the New Fellowship Hall. Don't forget to bring your snacks and please bring your backpacks. Um, other than that, that's all the announcements I have for you this morning. Um, Come by, see our pastor, give him a hug. We know you love him. He served our church so well for so many years. Uh, it's such a great day to be able to celebrate him and Miss Terry. So be, please uh, make sure that we are downstairs um, for that. Let's pray real quick, and uh, we will meet together downstairs. Father, we love you so much. Thank you for the truth of this gospel message. Father, help us to understand, Father, that this is the message that we, seek, we should seek to share. 
Father, this is the most important thing we can share with somebody. This is the most important thing that's ever been told to us, Father, that you are the savior of the world, that you have come and you have lived and you have died and you have been buried and you have rose again in glorious light, that you're alive and well, that we have a living hope. And Father, I pray that we all would understand this morning that this news is the most important news that we can share. This news is the most important news that we can remind ourselves of. We need to hear it. Those around us need to hear it. Those across the street and across the world need to hear it. So Father, this morning, remind us of the truth of the gospel. Remind us of the urgency that we should seek to share it. And Father, if someone here doesn't hasn't placed their faith in you and doesn't know the truth of the gospel, Father, I pray this morning that you would begin to draw them oh so close to your heart. Father, convict us of our sin. Help us to draw close to you each and every day through your word, through prayer. Thank you for the message of the gospel. We love you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Church, you're dismissed.